For every 100 million years that pass, an atomic clock will only be off by about one second. Compare that to the clock in my watch, and it will be off about a second every two days. So how are atomic clocks so accurate? And why are they called atomic? Recently, I released a video on how quartz clocks work. Now, quartz clocks are essentially the clocks that we use in our day-to-day -day lives, like in phones and watches. And atomic clocks are actually just modified quartz clocks. So if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go check it out to understand how quartz clocks work. Uh, you can access that video by clicking the card here. Anyways, all you need to know for this video is that a piece of quartz vibrates at a very steady rate. For most clocks, it's 32,768 times per second. And the clock can count these vibrations. Once the quartz has vibrated 32,768 times, one second has passed. But the vibration of a piece of quartz changes slightly over time. It speeds up or slows down ever so slightly as the temperature and the pressure changes. So overall, they lose or gain about a second every day or two. Enter atomic clocks. Now, there are actually three types of atomic clocks, cesium, rubidium, and hydrogen maser clocks. Now, for this video, I'll be describing how cesium and rubidium clocks work, which is essentially the same process. And those clocks look something like this. Now, contrary to popular belief, atomic clocks are not radioactive. They're not hazardous or dangerous. They're pretty much just like any other electronic. You could even strap one to your back and hike up a mountain to test the effects of time dilation and general relativity like this guy did. Now, the reason atomic clocks are called atomic is because they use individual atoms of cesium or rubidium to keep track of time. Let's look at one of those atoms. Now, both atoms of cesium and rubidium have one electron that hovers in the outer reaches of the atom, and that electron will absorb a very specific frequency of light, 9.192731777 gigahertz, also known as microwaves. If you're interested in what this means, you can look forward to a future video I'll be making on the electromagnetic spectrum. But all you need to know for the context of this video is that that electron that hovers in the outer reaches of the atom will absorb and will only absorb a very specific frequency of microwaves. So a quick note in the edit, the outer electron can actually absorb other very discrete frequencies of light, but this is the only one in the neighborhood of around 9 gigahertz. So there are other frequencies, but this is the only one that concerns atomic clocks. Okay, back to the video. And when that electron absorbs a microwave at the very specific wavelength, the electron gains energy. Now, the exact ways in which the electron behaves is extremely complicated and very counterintuitive. So for the context of this video, you can just think of it as the electron changing. Very nondescript, I know, but that's the best way to describe it without getting overly complicated and technical. Now, before the electron absorbs a microwave, it is said to be in a low energy state. And after it absorbs it, it is in a high energy state. Now, here's where the quartz clock comes in. Remember how I said that a piece of quartz vibrates at a very steady rate to keep time? Well, in an atomic clock, we keep that same vibrating piece of quartz, except this time we connect it to a flashlight that shines down a tube. But not just any flashlight. This flashlight produces microwaves at exactly, you guessed it, 9.192631177 gigahertz. And here's the thing, the flashlight and the piece of quartz are coupled together. So what this means is that when the quartz vibrates a little bit faster, the frequency of the microwaves goes up. And if the quartz vibrates a little bit slower, the frequency of the microwaves goes down. So as the microwave flashlight shines down the tube, an ejector shoots individual atoms of low energy cesium or rubidium down along the tube. Now, if the quartz happens to be vibrating at exactly the correct rate, meaning the temperature and pressure aren't throwing it off, then the quartz is keeping the exact time. And when the quartz is keeping the exact time, the frequency of the microwaves will be tuned to exactly 9.192631177 gigahertz, which in that case, the electrons in the atoms will gain energy and change to a high energy state. And it just so happens that when the electrons change to a high energy state, it changes the magnetic properties of the atom. So if you have a magnet right here, the path of the streaming atoms will be altered, but low energy state atoms would just go right through. Nothing happens. 
So right here, there's a detector making sure that this stream of atoms comes through at a steady rate. So to simplify, if everything is in order, then the quartz will be vibrating at the exact correct rate, which means that the microwave frequencies will shine at exactly the correct frequency, which means that those low energy state atoms will jump to high energy state atoms, which means that they will be altered through the path of the magnet and they will hit the detector. This is what happens when everything is in order. But what if everything isn't in order? What if the quartz is vibrating a little too fast or a little too slow? The temperature of the room has affected the quartz's vibration. Well, in that case, then the microwave frequency will be slightly off. The lower energy atoms will be completely disinterested in changing their state. So the magnet will not deflect their path and the atoms will not hit the detector. So what this means is that if the quartz is vibrating at exactly the correct speed, keeping exactly the correct time, atoms will hit the detector. But if the quartz is just a teensy bit too fast or too slow, atoms won't hit the detector. So the detector is the clock's way of knowing if the clock is keeping super accurate time or not. And if atoms aren't hitting the detector, in other words, the clock is just slightly off, then a tiny jolt of electricity has to be sent to the quartz to correct its vibration which corrects the microwave frequency, which makes the low energy state atoms jump to high energy state, which makes them be altered by the magnet so that they hit the detector and tell the clock, hey, you're keeping the right time. This process of sending a little electrical jolt to the quartz happens constantly. So the atomic clock is constantly self-correcting, making sure it's as accurate as possible. And something fascinating about this is how incredibly sensitive changes to the microwave frequency are. If the microwave frequency so much as changes from this to this, that's enough to cause the atoms not to hit the detector. So a little jolt of electricity will have to be sent to the quartz to correct it. That is such a mind-bogglingly small number. But that's why atomic clocks are so accurate. They're so sensitive. This is how the world keeps time. It's kind of incredible. And at this point, you might be wondering, why do we even need such accurate clocks? Well, in addition to controlling our time standards around the world, atomic clocks are also used for synchronizing phone calls, time stamping banking transactions, various scientific purposes, validating your credit card, or use in the global positioning system, GPS. I'll be releasing another video in a couple of weeks on how GPS works and how it uses atomic clocks. Another very fascinating topic. I want to thank Dr. Judah Levine from the National Institute of Standards and Technology for taking over an hour of his time uh, to help me understand how atomic clocks work. Uh, it took me quite a while to understand how they work, uh, but when Judah explained to me, it was kind of an enlightening experience, being so elusive to me for so long and finally being able to understand it. Uh, and in that way, it kind of made me feel more connected to the science. So I hope you found this video interesting, intriguing and possibly even enlightening. Thanks for watching. The path of the streaming atoms will be altered, but low energy state atoms would just go right through. Nothing happens.